Hi, Sam. Back. And I'm like, oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Are we filming this? Yeah, this is yeah, you're just seeing like, yes, that is a Well, I killed thing. a fox, too, one time. My mom made a possum, but she like she saw it in the road, so she's like, "Oh no!" She she slowed down really like a ton, and then it was like, <laughs> and then the back wheels went over. Oh, that was like, mom, you just gave it a slow, torturous death instead of a fast one. Yeah, I would definitely. Squirrels are like suicidal. Yeah, they're like I mean, Mrs. Yeah. Matthias, do you really want me to correct it? All I had to write was towards instead of uh, get half credit back. Sure. So you can F-U, half credit back. Let me write it in the same place I written it. That brings you to a 14 and a half, too. Mm -hmm. Which um, module is that? Module. I think it's 11. Yeah. Okay. What is this catch-all? <laughs> I had a bird and it stuck to the grill of my car like this. And then people kept honking at me and I didn't that is know why. So funny. That's like my mom. She ran over a deer and then it got stuck on the back of our car. We were like driving with this deer. <laughs> like a whole deer? Yeah, better than part of the deer. So, are we filming it? Uh, yes. That was all you. Okay. <laughs> um, if we have time at the end of class after all this math, I might try the electroscope thing again just because it annoys me. But on the video, you could actually see it moving a little bit. I don't think I gave you the electroscope part of the video because it wouldn't fit on the card. Oh, that's okay. So they might I'll watch what I have. Yeah. Um, Josh, pay attention. Yeah, Josh. Sorry, he's asking me. Right. So I'm asking you. Ask later. Okay. So, um, last week we talked about electroscopes charging by induction and conduction. We talked about. I don't even know what we talked about last week. Um, and we talked about the electrostatic force, equation of which is on the board. Um, here. You can combine that with our orbiting equation. Um, and set this equal to that for orbiting electrons, which there's definitely one of those on the test. Um, so today we're going to talk about the three rules of drawing electric field lines. So can somebody tell me if I want to draw an electric field that is between, let's say, these two guys are uh, equal, let's say 1.0 millicoulomb positive and opposite, 1.0 millicoulomb negative charge. Um, if I want to draw the electric field, uh, how would I go about that? There are three rules of drawing electric fields. What are they? Oh, I know one. Go ahead. Okay. The arrows point out of positive charges and they port point in to negative charges. Okay. So, my arrows will come from positive, go to negative. And how do I know how many arrows to make that? They have to be the same since they have the same uh, charge. Okay, right. same charge equals same number of arrows. So let's go for six. Let's see. Wait, where, where'd you get the six from? I you made it up in my one. head. Really. That's yeah. another rule. Is that five? Yes. Hummer. Oh. That's rule 42.1b. Did you just say like 4? Like 4. So we have 6. Uh, what if uh, we changed, uh, what's the third rule? They can't cross. They cannot cross each other, which they possibly are about to right there. They should be like evenly spaced and nice and Which you could have like, I could say, a hundred, and I could draw a hundred lines. Yes. You, you can pick. Uh, he says what, use 12 or something? Yeah. Per ish. I don't, I use six usually. So what happens when you have... I use eight. I use four. Um, so what if we change some things? One Wait, end. um, what, like when they can't cross, what happens when there's like a hundred of those little particles all together and they're like three-dimensional too? So how do they not cross then? Yeah, I was kind of wondering that too. That's complicated, isn't it? They would have to like do a loop and come back to itself or something. <laughs> 
Well, they're going to keep going in a direction that they're pointing forever. But you then they're going like, to, there's some of them are going to cross then. Well, they'll be repelled or attracted, bent, changed. This is just easy physics, Josh. Can panic. But I mean, I know. They, Take calculus there's no room else. for them all to go out. Just like we ignore air resistance. And this is cheater physics for beginners. Alright, so what if we change some things? What if we have two one millicoulomb charges that are... Um, are both positive. Oh. Um, How will the lines be different? And they're not they in have, any way near each other. They, They'd be going like out opposite. Like. Okay. So. That's what I was repelling. So they'll have equal number of lines going from positive somewhere. We'll draw four this time for night. But they'll go, of course, away from each other because like Where charges. Where are they going repelled. now? Into. They're, they're just going going into outer space. Oh, so we're just talking about like, pretty much like magnets. Really ugly people yeah. with long yeah. lines. Electrostatics <laughs> and magnetism are very similar. <laughs> but these are charged so particles. So just think of magnets when you do this, right? Right, they like actually are charged yeah. particles. Like the north and south poles. Because like a, a, a positive would link with a negative, and then a negative would link with a positive. But a positive and a positive and a negative and a negative would not. They would repel each other. Yeah, that's easy. But this is more like... That's what I I didn't understand what the prior it's just negatively charged and positively charged particles instead of north and south poles and magnets. They behave in similar ways. I mean, the equations are very similar. I mean, it's amazing how creation is so symmetrical. I mean, gravity and, um, and um, the electrostatic force have such a similar equation. Electricity, magnetism, electrostatics. I mean, very, very huge similarities. You can tell the same creator has designed this. Um, what if we change the magnitude? So we'll have a situation like this, where one charge is positive. So we have a plus one microcoulomb charge here. Let's give us a minus to microcoulomb charge here, how will we draw the lines for that? Maybe like four and eight or something. Okay, so we'll go half of the lines coming from here that go from here. We go, like the rule says, from positive to negative. So one, two, three, four, but then the charge that is double will have some other lines coming from the middle of nowhere. Oops. Or something like that. Um, oh, I hope. That makes sense. And then, well, we'll probably so see other things in practice. Right those lines aren't in the direction of the one long no, they have to come from somewhere else because, well, I mean, I guess, yeah, my drawing skills are really bad, which is not that beneficial. I don't exactly know. They'd sort of... Okay, because I was, like, kind of crewing them towards the... Uh, yeah, but they don't actually come from that yeah. charge because, yeah, they should. Better okay. drawers than I should draw them that way. Um... That's one of those moments when I'm unobservant, and that is to your benefit, probably. Because if you draw the right or wrong, I might not notice. Uh, as long as there are twice as many going into the twice as big charge. Let's see. Uh, tell me about Newton's three laws again. I ask these silly questions sometimes for weird reasons. What's Newton's first law? Every action is no, that's three. That's when everybody remembers. Okay, well that's the important guy for today, but what's one just for fun and because the final will be in two months? Oh my gosh. Are we going to get a study guide next? Yep. Do we have all the equations?
equations on the test. Wait, what is that? A midterm or finals? You can make Final. yourself uh, midterm an was like December. Yes. Gosh, midterms would have been like three months yeah, ago. I know, right? Yeah, I don't do midterms. You guys have enough to get on with without a midterm. Wait, so we're done with the CCT in three months? This is March. End of March right now. Yeah. Um, last class is I'm in one more month of CSI. We have technically like seven oh. classes left or something. It goes by really fast. I know. Well, so. don't have any labs left either. No, I do. Yeah, I do yeah. too. We yeah. just have a big report. Yeah. Yeah. You have a big report for the electroscope, and then next week you'll have a big report for the capacitor. And then at the end of the year, when you guys should be all prepared, There's I give you lovely worksheets for the um, the electricity labs, so you don't have to actually. There's write not your lab half as much labs as there was last year. I know. Oh, I so thought it was easier labs. last year. I did, the however, labs. buy some supplementary material, so next year might suffer more than you guys. Yes. <laughs> I see my home school I shopping. Last year. Harder, this last year. harder, but not as like many. many. Not that you guys know. <laughs> like, I was like, ooh, this looks so good. I, and I, did, I, like, <laughs> I already had the A. All <laughs> Matt did is get the A. He turned in everything he like needed. A he quit. Seven laps. <laughs> Seven laps. It's an A. <laughs> it's an A. I, I got what are you going to say? I finished last year with like an 88, which I was happy about. Also, remember, yeah. I do drop your lowest test grade in here. Does that have the final? No. <laughs> <laughs> Although, if you have two really bad test grades and a super great final grade, I might drop the lowest and replace the second lowest with an extra copy of the final grade, too. I mean, it'll have the opposite problem. <laughs> I don't do that. Yeah, we're all going to be, though, like, dropping, like, 93s. I seriously 93s. stand there on the last day of class and read the final. So we are going to have it in class now? I don't know. I haven't gotten that, that we yet. Probably really not. We it's very I unlikely. I have a time thing. Like, but we'll have a massive It's ten of questions. Class. Ten questions, that's it? The final's ten questions wow. and some definitions or something. But we're allowed, last last year's year's final. we're allowed to make a, I, have to oh, a I screwed up last year's final really bad, but someone pointed out in the middle of the final and I had to change it. Oh, was that the um, leaders or something like that? It was a different unit. I used, I promised them only metric and I used an yeah. a English unit. Oh yeah, because there was one problem on the uh, I messed up final the that was messed up, so we got got the problem right. I asked them the number. I just like, what would this be in Celsius? What would the change in temperature be in Celsius? What would the change in temperature be in Kelvin? Well, obviously they're the same because Celsius and Kelvin, the change in would be the same. Mm -hmm. yeah. Trick question. It was. It didn't trick to me. <laughs> the questions, yeah, you're gonna put on the final. Or I just, like, it took super me a long time. They're not so bad, and we'll go over it like a serious review. So we're allowed to have a a sheet. You can have an equation sheet equation that you make sheet. yourself. Score. Yes. How big? Let's give you the whole sheet. book. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, there's no super need for it to be bigger than a piece of paper. You can't even. It can just be front and back. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I like one piece of but paper. But it can't be I words. It has to be equations. You can't Can I write the essay the question answers on the note sheet. That's just not fair. You have to actually know the things, you know. Um, so, Newton's first law. I feel it's there. <laughs> that thing where the like, calculator like saves this answers, that can't be good. And the, and the object in motion oh, tends to save motion. motion. That can't it saves motions. It can't be good. It can't be good on outside the board. Yes, and an object at rest, like, why it stays at rest unless acted upon by a force. No, Newton's two. second law. An equation. Um, is this like a normal force? E equals mc squared? No, that's Einstein. Oh. Um, uh, F equals MA. 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 F equals MA. Force is equal to mass times acceleration. Um, and Newton's third law. Every object has an equal opposite force. Has an equal and opposite force. Um, and that's a key one that you would want to consider if you get stuck on the test. Every force has an equal and opposite force. Also, just remember every time you bump your bottle of water, it gets a little bit flatter. Yeah, it does, which is sad. Um, 
And every time the temperature keeps get increasing in this room, it gets flatter too because awesome. gas doesn't dissolve in the liquid. Seltzer water? Yeah. With flavor. I can I'm never drink that. Don't ever. Only I'm drink. Always get the. Like my friend used to drink it all the time, and I tried drinking. Yeah, don't drink it. Fine. Don't drink just drink plain seltzer, seltzer water. Get the kind that's like fruit flavored. All right, I have a note on this sheet, and then I'm done with my sheets. I'm going to tell you right now. Next week, it says, make sure to tell them to call the stationary charge, lowercase q sub 1. So when you're doing math next week on stuff you haven't seen yet, the stationary charge is the lowercase q sub 1. Stationary, or the moving charge will be q sub 2. Always call the stationary charge Q sub 1. Then we don't fumble around being confused with each other when we do problems. Stationary charge is number 1. All right, now, review questions. Is that how they teach it in the book? I have no idea, but it will help you because I have a note that it will help you. <laughs> I don't know why exactly. But there was some kerfuffle. I sort of remember that. But I'm telling you what my notes say. Stationary charge is Q sub 1. We'll find out why next week. <laughs> Number six, in the electric field drawing, what is the significance of the direction the arrows point in? What? What is the significance of the direction that the arrows point? It shows which is positive and which is the direction that they would show a positive or show a positive part of the Okay, so it goes away from positive toward negative. Or on that side. Uh, in an electric field drawing, uh, what is the significance of the density of the electric field lines? How many of them come out of each particle? The magnitude of the charge. Okay, bigger charge has more lines. Twice as big of a charge has twice as many lines as half as big of a charge. Number eight, uh, Stephanie, two positive charges are placed near each other. If they're free to move, what will happen? They'll move away from each other. Right. Positive like charges repel, so they'll move away. How will the force they exert on each other change as time goes on? It'll decrease in force. It'll decrease why? Because of the radius. Right, so when you answer that question on a test, you give me an equation. You ah, say, I always forget. They repel away from each other. The distance between them is continuously increasing. So, because the force and the radius are directly proportional as the radius decreases, uh, or inversely proportion, proportional as radius increases, force decreases. Direct, inversely proportional. Inversely yes. proportional. Yes. Yeah, all those questions with the equations, I always just ramble on and on and on. It's usually to your advantage, but if you make one little mistake, then I have to dig through it and dig it out. Well, my, I just don't really write the equations because I right. always forget which one I'm supposed to write the equations for, so I just... Every single question should have some kind of scientific backing. Mm -hmm. um, mm, right, number nine. Let's see. Oh, like Andrea, a physicist is doing experiments on charges. She measures an electrostatic force that exists between two charges. She writes down that charge 1 exerts a 1,001 newton force on charge 2. What is the magnitude of the force that charge 2 exerts on charge 1? 1,001 newtons. And vector? What? The vector. In what direction? Back at it? Uh -huh. In the opposite, opposite direction. direction of the first one? And why? Because. Just because. Because what we just talked about. Which is Newton's third, third law. law. Okay, so in that problem, why? Well, when you're telling me a theory question, you need to tell me why Newton's third law. Can we just say Newton's third law or do we have to write out Sure. Newton's, third, Newton's law? third law is good. Okay. That's why we just talked about it, so we don't have to ramble on about it. Um, and we all know which one it is now. <laughs> um, number 10. Uh, Christina, two charges are held in place close to one another. The electrostatic force they exert on one another is measured. If the distance is then doubled, what happens to the magnitude of the force? So it'll be quarter? Yes, it'll be quarter. Why? So. Because it's um, inversely related to uh, the force. Yeah. 
force and then it's also squared, so that makes it 40. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, make sure to cover test question 13. Let's all figure out why I wrote that note. So who, when they read the little part where he says, my my that favorite joke on this side. He's like, my, when he's like, my favorite joke I thought it was oh, like, my really funny. Like, this really awesome. is really awesome. Probably most of you guys won't have trouble with this, but my lack of spatial ability is hard for this. So let's take this, for example. Um, if I wanted to place a particle um, that is, let's say, positively charged, I want to just put a positively charged particle in this electric field, this red one here, and I want to put it in the place where I would experience the most, the greatest acceleration, where would I put it? Right next to the other positive, or like right in the next center? Why? No, it'd like be in the middle. close to the negative because the negative is more. It's pushing more. Well, then it has a longer time to accelerate. No, but look, there's more force involved with the negative. What's the like charge of the particle? Positive. positive. Well, let's just say positive. it's positive. Oh. Never mind. Well, then it just go right it next push, to it. It would be pushing it and it would be. I thought attracting. it was negative. I thought you said. Okay, so it would be both repelled by this one, if it were here, it would be repelled by this and attracted by this. Of course, here, also repelled by this and attracted by so this. So in the very center. Well, and you want to think about putting it where the field lines are the densest. Right, that's why it so, would be in the middle. Right, so he put it here, I would say probably here, because it's, this is a greater magnitude, so it would be more attracted by this greater magnitude at a closer range. It would be, of course, repelled over here, but it's further from the greater magnitude. And since it force is inversely proportional to radius, I would put it as close as possible there. Also, the field lines you can see are denser here than they are over here, so acceleration will be greater in the place where field lines are more dense. Mrs. Hines? Yes. Would it be slightly down, like in between the two straight lines, because those are closer together? They shouldn't be. All the oh, field lines okay. should be equally spaced. Okay. But I can't draw. <laughs> what if I put a positively charged particle somewhere in there and I wanted it to experience less acceleration, the least amount of acceleration, where would I put it? Well, it would be repelled by the positive charge. In the very center. Oh, that's a good point. Like, maybe even somewhere, because of the magnitude difference, I might put it somewhere in the middle, and then it would have the two forces pulling at it, and they would cancel each other out to some extent, right? Well, they'd be going in the same direction. But it would be repelled by this one. It would be attracted by the other, so... It would be attracted... Oh, wait, that's bad. Yeah, so it would be going in one direction. So where can I put it? Outside! It would be yeah, like, like by, yeah, outside the positive. Okay. <laughs> Just not near it at all. <laughs> Where the field lines are least dense, which would be out here. I don't see any field lines going on out there. So less acceleration would go there. So, yeah, I'm good with that. So just think about the density of field lines when it asks you on the test where you would place a charge so it experience low acceleration or put it where the field lines are most dense where it would experience the greatest acceleration. Okay. That is confusing. So we need to talk about practice problem seven. That's where we start this week, right? So... Draw the electric field generated by two stationary charges, which is basically what we have here on the red drawing. Uh, if a negatively charged particle were placed in the field, in what direction would it travel and where would it experience the greatest acceleration? It would travel to the left. If we're taking that, that picture. If we're taking this picture, 
put a negatively charged particle in the field, where would it go? Closer to the... Okay, and it's the same here, I think. It would go toward the positive, which would be to the left. Um, and where would it experience the greatest acceleration? Close to the negative. Close to the negative, because it's being repelled by the larger negative charge than it would be attracted by the smaller positive charge. Um, so where the lines are the densest, I would put it between them as well. So not necessarily over here, but here where it would be attracted as well as repelled. So, so placing it here would be uh, maximum acceleration. Um, that's all of that one. Number eight, calculate the electric field at the midpoint between the charges drawn in problem seven. Okay, so if we add to this drawing, we'll get rid of the couple guys. And it gives us a distance of from here to here of 2.50 meters. So if I put that at the midpoint, we'd have 1.25 meters on either side, obviously. So, um, what electrostatic force would a negative 0.66 millicoulomb charge experience if it were placed at that point? Okay, oh, so I did what, this wrong. <laughs> what do we need to do to figure that out? First, we'll erase everything else. All right. So this little black particle here is going to have a, at the end of the problem here, negative 0.66 millicoulomb charge. I like another pen. Okay. So, we have equations up here to talk about um, electrostatic force. We have equations to talk about um, all kinds of stuff. So, where are we going to start with this? I don't remember. Is it going to experience uh, an equal attraction this way as that way? No. No, so we have to figure out both. Why are none of my markers looking up? Um, so we're going to figure out the um, the electrostatic uh, force with relation between this and this, and then between this and this. So let's use our um, equation here. We'll go with. E equals K Q over R squared. Okay, so we have which one matters? Wait, we have to find force first. Maybe force? Find force? Pick one, Sam. Yeah, Sam? Okay. I like this one, I guess. Okay, so we're going to solve this for force. All right, so then we find the force between each thing. Oh, I'm hot. Can you turn that off for half a second? The camera? Yeah.